The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hello, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, and it's an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. Justin, for a second, it kind of sounded like you were starting with like a Yakov Smirnoff thing there. Hello! Hello, America! Is that still... Is that still topical? <laughs> Yakov Smirnoff, is that? My name is Chester Bingleton. I come oh. from other country. Okay. I guess follow-up question, is it also now deeply problematic and maybe has it always been? Hugely, oh, hugely, yeah. wildly. Defo. It, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, Have yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but his show is like so wildly patriotic. It is baffling yeah. to me. And so incredibly xenophobic. <laughs> It's it's weirdly very xenophobic. It's like he got in and he was like, "That is it, everybody. I'm, Nobody I'm the else last different. One. I'm the last one. Everybody else." Do you think that Yakov Smirnov looks at Borat and he's like, "That's too far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've gone too far. Uh, Way to so ruin it for the rest of us. Becoming I'm, Dracula a little bit. Let's. So um, sorry that we missed the day." Of days, we try to come out with an episode on every 420, and honestly, y'all, we just couldn't get it done. I tried tried to do an April 20th episode, but then I got high, So, and that's one we could have done. It's one we could have done, but we did. Do y'all remember that song? It's all about responsibilities this person had. But they didn't end up doing them. It's a cautionary tale. It's a cautionary tale, and it's really a powerful anti-drug message if you think about it. Yeah. Because it's like, I was supposed to pay my rent, and then I got high, and then I got evicted from my apartment and lost my job. And it's like, I was supposed ah, to see? read at the library to kids, but then I got high. Yeah, I was supposed to take my heart medicine, but then I got yeah. high, and I, and I died, teens. Mm-hmm. And now I'm a ghost warning you from beyond the grave. I know the cush is fun. But then I got high. Ooh. Ooh. A lot of people are excited for the episode we got coming up here in about 17 episodes because it will be the 420th episode. And I don't know how to start laying the groundwork to not disappoint those people it just because of how be. just just how profoundly detached we are from... I feel like, to make a weird pop culture pull, it kind of feels like in Buffy the Vampire Slayer when the demons, like, don't celebrate Halloween because it's so cliche. I feel like for our 420th episode, we should just make it devoid of any jokes about dank nugs and blunts. Alternative idea, and I had this last night, and I was thinking about it. We, instead of putting up a proper episode, just take all the audio out of an episode of Family Guy and put that up instead. <laughs> uh huh. Is that okay. now, Justin? You know some things about entertainment law. If yes. I put up uh, just 23 tight minutes of Stewie and Brian, <laughs> just thinking about these two clowns <laughs> makes me start rolling, even when I'm not on the cush. It's a um, great, uh, it's a great question, Griffin. You, can do that. The one uh-huh. issue you do need to be careful of is you got to make sure you have the audio from the commercials in there as well, mm-hmm. because that's the only way it counts for them towards that money. And that's Seth's money, guys. Hey, guys, I'm not here to take Seth's money. That's his money. So you got to leave the commercials in it on that one. L- uh, let me ask you a question. What if um, instead of just straight taking all the audio from one episode, we did a super cut of an hour of all of the like uh and er sounds from a bunch oh, of episodes of Family yeah, Guy, yeah. Oh, a Family Guy. I kind of thought yeah. you were going to say our podcast because there's a no, lot no, of no. source mis- okay. No, no, no. All Family Guy, mm. and you just hear all the different voices. Most of them Seth, 
and you just hear all the uh, 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 ah, uh, what, if, uh. what if we did just one episode of my Bim Bam where each of us brought an episode of Family Guy uh-huh. and just tried to recap it as much as we could. Like a book Remember? report? Yeah, a book report, and we could talk about all the great cutaway jokes, and we could talk about, like, the, you know, the baby trying to kill the mom. Do you think America would listen to a podcast called That Great Family Guy Humor? <laughs> this just us <laughs> recapping individual just select, some our, select some episodes. Oh, we call it episodes. Extended Family Guy. That's good. Nuclear Family Guy. We'll keep workshopping it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just got- so sorry we missed. I didn't do really any good weed humor. I tweeted one thing. At like 4.05 on 420, thinking like, okay, and then in 15 minutes, a punchline. And then I didn't. I didn't. I forgot. Then I got high. <laughs> uh, I was going to tweet something so funny, but then I got high. Snoop on, on the evening of 419 tweeted, don't forget to leave milk and cookies out for me tonight. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it was. It was. I had a we very leave it to the, good. We leave chortle. it to the professionals. The professionals yeah. who know where we even comes from. Thank you. The ground from Gaia. It comes from Gaia. I keep telling everybody it's natural. Even John I'm, Boehner now is on the oh, crazy he? wave. He loves does he party? it. Yeah. Now he's in 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 the industry. He's in the biz now. I'm so worried that someday when she is much much older and understands language that bb is going to write a tell-all book that reveals my horrible secret that i don't know where to get weed from and most of these jokes are based on nothing yeah i'm just so afraid that everyone's going to find out my nasty truth that i didn't do as much drugs as i said i did and i don't know where it came from this idea or why every time anyone sees the number 420 in the wild or uh, on the same topic the number 69 in the wild and they make sure to snap a pic and send it to me. Because both those numbers are not numbers that I'm reflect the core of my being. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the thing is the McElroy brothers, we don't celebrate a lot of artifice. And like the only artifice and irony we have is that we are cool. <laughs> is that we think that, right. that we are edgy in any sort of way. In any sense. Like... I'm almost to the point where I could get it for my glaucoma. Like that's about <laughs> where I'm at on the on the scale. Um, so let's let's uh, let's help some people. Um, oh, by the way, Texas, if you came out uh, last weekend, is that was it last weekend? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes, last weekend. Thank you. That was very fun. You were all good eggs. And, and thank, thank you to you. everybody who came to the uh, the Moon Tower show, the Schmanners Moon Tower. Oh, show. that good, good. Fresh oh, it was so good. Good. It was um, amazing. Good do you think maybe we could? Do you think maybe we could open with a Yahoo? Because I got four Yahoos this week that are all club bangers. I'm okay. very excited about. Uh, this one was sent in by Adrian Cowles, who is so deep in the game right now, just like crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Thank you so much, Adrian. Well, so on their way to earning a nickname, perhaps yeah, or a getting tagline. There. Getting there. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Nick A07 who asks, "How do I be brave on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror?" Well, good news. It's not that anymore. Now it's the Guardians of the Galaxy prison break not, extreme. Not in Florida, baby. Oh, really? Yeah. It's it's still a big drop, right? It's still a big scary drop, and I don't think... Yeah, but now know, there's a raccoon sitting next to you holding your hand. Okay, well, that might help, but let's imagine that wasn't true. This will be my first time going on a drop tower ride, especially at Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios. Is that what it's called? I felt like I don't want to go on it because I'm scared, and I am tired of being scared. But my mom's said she's going on it, but her back hurts. I'm worried Mm. something could happen to her if I don't go on with her. IDK, what to do when the time comes? What should I do? Should I go on with her or not? How do I be brave for this ride? How do I feel safe? I am just afraid what it will feel like when I float off my seat in the air when dropping. I do worry too much. Lol. Seriously, I need help. Okay, wait. We'll Mm. get to that in a second. What does this person think that they are going to do to help their mother's back while they're there? (laughs) Just hold the spine, hold the spine upright while the drop is happening and try to cushion the tailbone when the ground hits. I think it's wild that this is a ride where you plummet, you Mm -hmm. know, 10 stories and then come to an immediate zero miles an hour stop. Yeah, by hitting um, the ground. It's by hitting the ground. It's extremely dangerous. And I guess I hey, you know what? I just figured out where they get all the fucking ghosts from. 
and it's yeah. the f- former riders of the of the ride. So it's oh, cool okay. that it's cool that Disney World has two exits, really, if you think about it. The main one in front of Mickey's Castle, and then the Tower of Terror, which is sort of a more permanent exit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what not to do. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just this is if you're asking me about Tower of Terror etiquette, I, I not etiquette fear. No, but uh, but I'm going to tell you what not to do. I went on the Tower of Terror. Uh, Teresa and I went, and it it kind of hovers at the top for a second before plummeting to your death. Hovers at the top, and just before it dropped, somebody let out a blood curdling scream before it dropped, and no. everybody's everybody's emotional like emotional ride was yeah. ruined by that because everybody just turned around and went ah, and then it dropped i thought you were gonna say they let out a b- blood curdling toot which might be nice actually because somebody toots and you're like oh who did well at least i'm falling out of the fart cloud yeah so that could be something you could be grateful for the drop because it's like oh mickey get me out of this fart cloud it is mickey right who does it pulls the drop lever yeah, yeah. <laughs> he appears that out of nowhere is like I'm here. You goodbye. You're, you're fucked. <laughs> Peace out. Um, um, hold on to your mom's back. <laughs> Don't forget to hold your mom's back. <laughs> Turtles, bring me the hemorrhoid donut. Turtles, for your her mom's back. <laughs> <laughs> I got this one, Rod. This is how I get my kicks. <laughs> Be careful, my mom spine telescoped on this one. Der- now, which one was that? Who was that, Griffin? That was that Griffin. was Donald. Oh, um, now here's here's how Donald went. <laughs> oh, please give me Donald. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually. Oh my God! Drop scarier. it! Drop it! Drop it! I can't. <laughs> kill me! Kill me! <laughs> Escape, Donald. The ride. <laughs> um, is it possible to? Do you know what would make Twilight Zone Tower of Terror a hundred thousand times scarier? What? If one out of every twenty rides, or maybe it's fifty fifty, it just operates like a normal functioning elevator. Oh, that would be it good. takes you up to the top and then it's like, here we go. And then it slowly lowers you back down to the ground. And you <laughs> oh. get a little you get a little speech about expectations and disappointment. But then you don't know which one you're gonna get, right? I just made it. I made it scarier. They're not less scary, which is what this person asked for. Griffin, how about this? Right, fifty fifty. One time it operates like a normal elevator, which is it starts to drop, but then it opens on like every other floor, and someone goes, "Oh, uh, you know what? I'll get the next one." Mm. And like, so it's just kind of like, "Oh, we did," and you keep thinking the drop is coming. And just like Skrillex, you got to wait for that drop, and it never comes. Oh, I mean, if we, I, I can't stop thinking of ways to make it scarier, but I'm thinking about my own sort of real-life elevator fears, uh-huh. and obviously getting stuck is bad. Um, that's one way to make it scarier is if it also sometimes just, like, stopped. Um, uh-huh. But what if the doors open on one floor, and there was a big family all with a bunch of suitcases, and you knew they were going to try to all squeeze on the elevator? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> hey. Listen to this one. <laughs> Listen to this joke I got. All right. What if on one floor it opened up and there was a guy and he was in a suit and his suit just had a bunch of summer squashes on it and his name was Reginald Q Summer Squash and uh-huh. he kind of did his thing. Now, what's so, his thing? What's his thing, Justin? Juice? What's... Can you describe the... Exactly. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Okay. He's, his, he's See, his own thing. I'm really glad you said that, Justin, because I was going to make a goof about, like, you're on the elevator and, you know, you have to get somewhere important, but a whole bunch of, like, people in, like, that just got out of the pool and are still, like, dripping wet get on and you're trying to... But but your thing about someone in a... Let me get this again. uh, Summer squash suit? Was that (laughs) it? Yeah. yeah, 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 Now, is he he by himself? Uh, No, there are two sort of spooky entities with him to be decided later. I gotta say, this yeah. does remind me of a Saturday Night Live bit. Mm, with, I haven't seen it. Yeah, well, it was very similar. Go to bed early on Saturdays. It was, it, 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 typically it was, got a newborn. So it, The bit was called Gilly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that was back before I had kids. Gilly. Oh, um, you man. unloved child. I, I'll take. I'll scoop up Gilly. If no one else here will love the Gilly sketch, 
I will take care of Gilly. Please climb into my satchel, Gilly. I'll carry you through the wasteland. I'm here for you, the sketch, Gilly. My favorite on Saturday Night Live is when someone's doing an impression of somebody, and that person actually shows up. And how embarrassing. How could you do this? How did you you not know that Hillary Clinton was right there? You didn't know. Catherine McKinnon was doing an impression of her, but then the actual Hillary showed up. Oh, oh, Catherine how McKin- awkward. Catherine McKinnon, is she your third grade teacher? <laughs> like, are you on Listen, that formal of a basis? Yes. For Ms. What, you think I'm just going to be all chummy and be like, hey, yo, Kate, hey, what's yo, up, special, buddy? Special K. Um, how about a question? <laughs> I recently made some new acquaintances who live just a few blocks away from me. My friend and I were recently at their place working on a project, and we commented on their beautiful en- enclosed porch, to which they replied, oh, yeah, you're free to use it any time, even if we're not at home. Oh, 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 <laughs> I was shocked by this offer, but laughed it off as if they were just joking. However, my friend said she planned to drop by and knit on their porch later this week when they are at work. Am I right in not hanging out in the home of someone I don't know very well when they are not there, or am I missing out? That's from Porch Squatter in Portland. This is okay. unacceptable. This okay. is unacceptable. It's, it's clearly unacceptable because we could get into a debate. About where does house start? Mm. For me, I feel uncomfortable walking in front of people's houses on the sidewalk sometimes. Because if yes. the, if their kids go out there and do chalk drawings on it, it's that's that's house, baby. I sometimes um, feel weird driving by a house and looking at it too long. Um, yeah, and then your little gold tooth shines and sparkles because you're mm-hmm. planning to steal all their treasures. Oh, oh, the idea of someone, I, I just feel 24-7 someone assumes I'm casing the joint. Yeah, right. for sure. Um, so I think we could get into a debate about if porch is house, except for the fact that it is an enclosed porch. And, when you and put walls condition. around it, hey gang, when you put walls around it, that's a house, baby. Yeah, this is true. Think about the difference between garage and driveway, right? That is basically driveway outside. Oh, garage inside. That's a ha- that's a house, and now that's a house. If I took my kitchen and did sort of a open concept, that's not what the term traditionally means. But I t- knocked down all the walls in the kitchen and put up screens instead, um, so that everybody could smell all the great pies and cookies I'm always making. Mm-hmm. Um, then that's still house. That's Do you know what house. I mean? Um, you can't just go in someone's house when they're not there. Um, end of end of end of discussion. It feels like, right? Is it there a discussion like, to be had? Mm, you they, do have the direct. Uh, the person did directly say, "Feel free to use my porch whenever." Except, I did oh. do this in college, though. I would go to Jason Eldridge's house, and we would all use sit on his porch and use his grill, even if he wasn't at home. And he was always at home, so this is theoretical. But if he wasn't at home, if he was at at Arby's or office depot or something Mm -hmm. then we would just you sit on his porch but i was younger then it was yeah that was i i I think there's an exception to be carved out for like weed and everquest dens which is kind of what jason's house was i feel like for you guys where it was at that point it's more of a community space it's more of like a a like 18 to 24 what what we would traditionally think out of as a hangout, yeah, it's your, than it's like your peach somebody's pit. family home. Yes, um, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a non-starter. How do you let me hit you with this? How do you guarantee fucking tea that they're not home? Because you gotta be sure. I'm talking about you need to break and enter first, just to make sure nobody's home, and then you know lock the lock the doors up as you're leaving and then you can hang out on the porch because can you imagine hanging out on the porch and then somebody walks outside like what the fuck are you doing i griffin i'd i'd rather have that than for me to be sitting on the porch and somebody comes home from work and they've had like a terrible day at work or like their boss yelled at them yeah and they they, like didn't get their shit done and it's just like hey buddy just me reading on your porch drinking some lemonade you sure do look rough And it's just like, get the fuck out of here. This is my fucking castle. Eventually, you're right, Travis. If you do this every day, eventually there will come a day when they're like, get off my porch. I need this porch today. This is important right now. Did you you schedule this? I hung up up a thing and it says mine on every day. Get out. 
the reason I couldn't do this is because it's not at my house. I'm like a toddler with the number of accessories that I require. What yeah. if I got there and I realized that my Pepsi Max, um, because it was in a useless 20 ounce plastic bottle, got warm because all plastic bottles do instantly the second you take them out of refrigeration. It got warm and now I have a warm drink. What do I do now? Well, I guess I drive home. I guess now I have to get in my car and drive back to my house. Um, also, <sighs> The problem is that they invited you to use the porch, so if you don't use the porch, it's going to be rude. you got to do something pretty heinous on that porch to get that invite revoked. <sighs> do you know what I mean? And then okay. and then you won't have this problem anymore. So I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that means leaving a bunch of ham slices all over. Um, I don't know if it means leaving a bunch of roast beef slices all over. I don't know if it means like hiding pepperonis. Unless. 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 You start making improvements to the porch because Justin's made me think like maybe you set up like a mini fridge out there, right? Uh, and you make enough improvements until now it's fair use and it's, it's your our, porch. It's our porch. I've remixed it fair use. Creative it's a fair Commons use porch. porch. Yeah, that could be good. What um, if you turn buy into me a like mini a, fridge? I hate, and then I can't just. I was gonna get a mini fridge next week. Now you've bought me one I hate, and I can't justify it. I'm stuck with this one. It's got room for half a coke. You, it, the other half sticks out the top of it. It only cools the bottom half of the can of Coke. <laughs> Why did you get this terrible fridge? It was on sale. There's three baby teeth in it. Like, what? Is this used? Was this someone who was storing baby teeth in? It only no, cools half a Coke? Um, Maytag has a new fridge, and they put the baby teeth right in there because it's supposedly soaked up the stink really good. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever smelled a baby tooth before, but... Good God. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. This Yahoo was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thank you, Graham. It's Yahoo Answers user question uh, mark. Who asks, how do you... <laughs> Let me read a voice fun. Okay. How do you eat a hot dog in a fancy way? Ooh. And then there's a picture of a hot dog. For just for reference? Yeah, it's a big Frank... Big, thick Frank. With Big a, Francis. With a line of mustard on it. How do you... Uh, excuse me. I'm going to the marina later, and so, uh, some of my fellow business... I don't even know what like fancy people sound like. Maybe it's like Downton Abbey, but an episode where they all crush some dogs. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? So, like, Matthew comes in, he's like, uh, if, Uncle, look what I've discovered from the Americas. There's like, like our sausages, but they don't taste like any sort of discernible thing. And They call uh, them wieners. They call them wieners like a dick, <laughs> Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've invited the Duchess over for dogs. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to figure out how not to get mustard on my fancy boy gloves. And uh, I tried biting into one of them, and it expressed a juice that managed to get all over my frock. And so, uncle, uncle, help me eat the hot dog in a fancy way. There's no scene in Downton Abbey that would not be improved by one or more of the characters enjoying a hot dog. <laughs> It just continued. What if just once there was a really dramatic, like, you've lost it all. How could. And as it panned across, there was just a servant sitting in a chair as it goes, and he's <laughs> eating a hot dog. <laughs> just as it, like, just, scr- just kind of goes past in a tracking shot. And you're just like, wait, hold on. <laughs> Rewind. Is that the under butler just eating a hot dog? I think that I guy's do- eating a hot. Is Lady Crawley eating. Oh my God, it's a hot dog. She's got well, like five of them on a paper plate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode. She's a, she's an American, and so she can eat the dogs and uh-huh. bring them all in, and she'll be like, "Oh, you guys are gonna love this." I don't know. It looks like one of our sausages, but it stinks a lot. <laughs> she's just got like a paper plate of hot dogs and like a two liter of like store brand root beer <laughs> and like That's a grip of her arm. That's it. And then maybe the servants are all eating it and all the rich people are like, I would never eat the hot dog. Come on. Come on. A hot dog? How but then the, you? uh, you've heated the dog. It stinks so bad. Why do I want to eat it and watch baseball? <laughs> and then they all do. And then they're like, you know what, pores? Maybe we have more in common than I initially thought. <laughs> now hand me a, a... Do we drink the hot dog water? What do we do with the... 
With the and water the, left over from the hotted dog. Bring me more tubular meat. Give me a split bun and some tubular <laughs> and then, meat. And then they decide that only they can have hot dogs. And they don't let the servants have them anymore. Because you can they- have this lobster and filet mignon. Give me another one of those round boys. <laughs> and then there's an episode because the uh their own Lord Grantham is only eating hot dogs and it's been mm. three weeks. <laughs> he just loves them so much, but it's the only thing he'll put into his body. So yeah. he's become racked with illness. And then World War II happens. Ugh. And then there's no more hot dogs. They gotta send all their hot dogs to the, to the, to the war. The Titanic effort. sank. There were 20 tons of hot dogs on the Titanic. <gasps> no. Did someone think of the hot dogs? All of those round boys at the bottom of the ocean getting <laughs> eaten by those fish. How much better would Titanic have been if at the end an uh, old woman threw a hot dog into the ocean and you watched it for... 40 minutes as it disintegrated in the water and then it sunk and it landed on the jewel of the ocean the heart of the ocean how do you eat a hot dog in a fancy way uh if i ever saw somebody with a knife and fork i would call the police Uh (laughs) so that's so that's out i I think think you dip it in water to help Mm. you eat it faster that's what kobayashi you've watched joey chestnut do his work and then you've thought Wow, what a fancy fucking what gentleman. What a fancy boy. You've thought well, that's that. That's the thing. Think this way, Griffin, right? How the Have you ever been impressed by someone eating hot dogs outside of a hot dog eating competition? No. No, but I've never watched a hot dog eating competition and thought anybody there was fancy in any Well, in it any depends way. on how you define fancy, doesn't it? Because, the yeah, old- if you're talking fucking Downton Abbey, no. But if you're talking, like, skateboard trick fancy... If there's no fancy way to eat a hot dog, then the best you can do is get it over with quickly so you have more time for, like, cotillion classes or what mm-hmm. the fuck ever fancy I people see. did. So if you blaze through the dogs, then people, okay. then it's Thank like you. you're, you have plenty of time to go, like, you know, polish your shoes. or Yes. If now, you pair the hot dog eating with a fancy... Wine. Thing. If you, oh whoa, <laughs> <I'm not lying. laughs> okay. The meat so, might not be fancy, but boy, this uh, the <laughs> name a wine, name a wine, name any wine. The Chardonnay that we you pair with Chardonnay. It. You would not. Oh, I, hot dog with Chardonnay, Justin. I just wanted to say I googled hot dog wine and. The the top result is the Marshall Hall of Fame Cafe in Huntington, oh, West Virginia. God. I don't know if they have a dish. Don't boil it in water. Boil, boil it those in wieners wine. in wine. Yes. Make them winers. Oh, these Franks will get you fucked, dog. Oh my god. These are these are Griffin McElroy's one hundred percent alcoholic hot dogs. <laughs> You're going to love these. I bet the Dave Matthews Band wine pairs really nicely with a hot dog. <laughs> if you're going to frank down, I think maybe have some of the Dave Matthews Band wine. That would be so good. Or maybe some of um, some of Sting's wine. Yeah. Wait, can we go back to the Dave Matthews Band wine? Because I just got there, and it's uh, you. C- it'll drink you under the table and dreaming. Thank okay. you. There it is. Yeah, Jeff. it took me, it took me a second. But I want to circle back. Okay, good job. Those are many fancy ways of being a hot dog. And now I would welcome you all right this way through the adjoining chamber into here, the money zone. <laughs> For cigars and brandy and hot dogs. I want to tell you about Casper. Then do it, coward. Casper one supports my brother, my brother and me, but also supports you while you sleep. I have a Casper mattress. I sleep on it when I, this is <laughs> very good. Yeah. Listen, this is not a joke. When we tour, I love getting out there, seeing the fans doing our goofs, hitting the road. But you know what I don't love being away from my Casper mattress. Now here's the thing you're thinking, ah, oh, this sounds too good to be true. It must be super expensive. No, no, no. They offer affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman and sells directly to the consumer. It's a great deal and a great mattress. 
And they combine multiple supportive memory phones for a quality sleep service with the right amount. And you're thinking, oh, what, what, right amount of sync or bounce? No, no, no. Both sync and bounce. And you can be sure of your purchase because Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on it trial. Right now, you can get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash mybrother and using the coupon code mybrother, all one word, at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Casper.com slash mybrother, promo code mybrother, all one word. Uh, can I tell you about Audible? Do you use Audible as much as I do? Because I, I probably it. I use it more. I probably use it most. How much do you use it? Go friend? ahead, Justin. I love Audible. They have lots of books that you can listen to, and it's much better than podcasts. Because oh. at the end of listening to a podcast, you're like, uh, fine. At the end of listening to a book, you're like, I'm better. I'm I've grown. I'm I'm a better person now. Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobook and spoken word audio products. Audible is the internet's leading provider of spoken word entertainment. They're great for helping you be a better you, whether you want to feel healthier, get motivated, or learn something new. Um, <clears throat> our listeners might enjoy. What am I listening to right now? Um, I don't know. You just set up that reading books makes you better, and so good luck. Can you find one? One that's, that? Well, I, I just wanted to pick one to highlight. Um, I know, but it's got to be a book that when you read it, it makes you, you know better. what's so good that I just finished actually. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal reads The Great Gatsby. Ooh. Was so good. He does an amazing reading of it. Uh, I read it. Did I read it just so I could listen to the book club episode of Flow for the Magic Tavern? No. Yes. But Jake Gyllenhaal does a magnificent job with that. Uh, Can I recommend yeah. one? Yeah. Um, I really liked um, – Vincent D'Onofrio reads Guy Fieri Family Food 125 Real Deal Recipes Kitchen <laughs> Test and Home Improved. Matt Griffin, I gotta go get a fucking towel to clean my computer, you dick. You got him. Um, let me recommend a whole bunch. I recommend uh, Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. It's very educational. Um, Allison Rosen just put out a book that's available. Tropical Attire Encouraged and other uh, Other Phrases That Scare Me. It's very good. I just accidentally played it. And uh, you can find basically, I think, all of the Poirot novels, the Agatha Christie's Poirot novels, read by Hugh Frazier, uh, who who was in the Poirot uh, Masterpiece Theater series. It's really good. Highly recommend. Um, I actually have another. I have a real one. Hey, um, hey literally, time out. Stop the show. Because I have to stop this recording so I can clean my computer. Oh God, it's fucking Justin! Fucking covered in coffee, because you're dumbass, dumb garbage. I actually, I have a real recommendation if I can do it real quick. Because my other one was a joke, but I think the Audible would appreciate it more if I gave a real recommendation. Now we just stopped for five minutes so I could clean my stuff. No, this one's not a joke. This one's not a joke. So it's not going to make okay. you laugh so hard you spill your. So coffee it's okay for me to go ahead and get some coffee. Yeah, get a big. That's what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just getting some coffee. Yeah, here big sip. Uh, hold it in your hands. So, what I want to recommend is actually so uh, Maggie Smith from Downton Abbey. It's funny we were just talking about it. Did a reading of Guy Fieri Family Food, 125 <laughs> Real Deal uh, Recipes, Kitchen Tested, Home Improved. That was really good. And she uh, reads it. Uh, trash can. She does it. The trash can nachos will move you to uh, tears and diarrhea. Okay, let's end on a real one because I was really excited when I found this. Uh, the series of unfortunate events series read by read, Guy Fieri. It's as really read by good. Tim Curry. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, is that it, real? Yeah, it rules. Anyway, Audible is offering our listeners a free 30 day trial membership. Get a free audiobook with a 30 day trial today by signing up. Go to audible.com slash my brother or text my brother to 500 500 to get started. And I read that last bit, so I think Travis should read the first Jumbotron here. Okay, this is for Joe, and it's from Candace. Hi, boobles. Yeah, that's right. I said boobles. I'm sending my message of love and caring out on the airways for the cutest babe ever. Love your sweet, sweet girlfriend, Candace. Um, deal with it. Deal with it. Handle it. Why did I take such an aggressive tone? I don't know. Boobles read with that, and now I've now I've said it, but read with that sort of um. That that fury, that passion, it was really something to behold. 
I think that, maybe that it's really a that's me. right because it kind of reads as if someone just said, what did you say? And I was like, yeah, that's I, I, right. I heard you reading that, Trev, and I thought, this is the episode that's going to get us the Webby. Here's a Yahoo. Nope. Here's, nope. A, just, here's nope. a Jumbotron. Yeah. Uh, here's Jumbotron for Zach, and it's from Fred the Human, Kaz, Eldon Toscobble, Donara, Nethgoria, R.I.P., and Morniel, who say, This is the unskippable cutscene where you get a Jumbotron, so don't jump in a portable hole and fly away on a spectral horse. What's this? What are they talking about? It's so fanciful. A portable hole? <laughs> it's magic and fanciful. I feel like I'm in a real Harry Potter book. Thanks for putting up with us and for introducing most of us to D&D and Taz. Happy whatever holiday is closest to when the McElroys read this. So, Earth Day. Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth. Day. Day. <laughs> um, what if he had said that? Because it, it, it was Earth Day when it happened. Welcome to Earth Day? Welcome to Earth Day. Or what if he had punched him and said, like, welcome to Good Burger? Welcome <laughs> to Good Burger. What if you kissed him instead? I have something I'd like you two to read. <laughs> it's called Why If You Kissed Him Instead. Let me do this one. This is for Ryan W. and Josie G. from Alphazor. Josie, you almost crashed a car because the tower was too dang tall, and then you used Shelby's towel. I hope no student of yours, yo, teaches you, and I'm lucky to be your friend. Happy B-Day. Ryan, happy B-Day, and thanks for being such a great brother. I'm really proud of you, and I love you a lot. I just wish you listened to my bim bam so you could hear it. <laughs> <into the> void. <laughs> Just Just screaming at the night sky. Brother! Brother! I communicate to you through podcasts. You don't listen to. Welcome, everyone, to the live wrestling spectacular in Los Angeles. So far, the world's most boring wrestling podcast has been destroying the competition. Isn't there anyone who can save us from this travesty? Wait, could it be? It's Titan Fights, the perfect wrestling podcast. Tights and Fights is here to save us from the monotony of boring wrestling podcasts with hilarious conversations. Woke trips through the history of wrestling. And joke about the finer points of people wearing spandex. What a match! And the Tights and Fights podcast will be back every week. Thursdays on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get podcasts. Please, these hosts have families. Tights and Fights Podcast. Tights and Fights. Excuse me, gentlemen. I have a game. <gasps> is a it very a new, fun is it game. A new bit. It's a new bit. It's a new game. I think we can only play it once. I don't know if it's going to be recurring. It might. You know what? We could probably play it more than once. Uh, I am going to. Do you think you Ellen? Do you think dance. Ellen said the same thing? Like, We're I've got dance. I've we'll got see. this. I'm gonna dance once. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you think Jimmy Fallon was like, "I'm gonna do a game with you, Dwayne the Rock Johnson," but this is the only one. So don't ask me to do any more games. No, this is a game that I'm going to play with you. Uh, this is called Celebrity Wine. Why not? Okay. That's the name of the game. Is Celebrity Wine? Why not? Okay. And you can spell it however you think is like funniest. I'm not a big pun guy, but I'm going to name some celebrity wines and their score from Wine Enthusiast. Their rating from Wine Enthusiast. What's that scale go up to? 100? It is a scale of 100 and like straight. I'm just going to be straight with you. There is no wine on this that rates below 82 points. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm. So it's like 82 to 100. Right? How bad do you think your wine would have to be to get like a one? Would it just be like water and like dirty I, water? I think Coke, <laughs> Coke Zero gets a one, not wine. All, to give you some sense of what we're talking about, how limited the scale is here, we're actually talking about 82 to 95 is the is this scale. If it's okay. 82, it fucking sucks. Like we can it's all insane. agree they're on the, the video game review scale. If it's an 82, it's fucking garbage. So I'm going to have you – here's the game. I'm going to give you a uh, – I have a list of celebrities that okay. I'm going to share with you boys right now. Um, and you are going to be able to pull from this list. We're not going to share this with the audience so they can get uh, – it'll be a little bit more uh, uh, fun, out of left field for them, I think. 
So I'm sharing this list with you, and these are all the celebrities uh, that are in in my list here. So I am going to tell you the name of the wine. Uh huh. You're going to tell me the celebrity, and then you're going to guess the score. The score. Okay. Okay. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Some of these will be easier than others. The name of this wine is 2007 Discovery Series Chardonnay. That's Mike Ditka's. <laughs> no, Mike Ditka's is not Ditka's, Mike Ditka's, no, Ditka's wine. Fo- Dick, Mike Ditka's football touchdown juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Drew Barrymore. It does. You're both incorrect. It's Dan Aykroyd. Damn. Dan Aykroyd made the 2007 Discovery Series Chardonnay from Sonoma County. Wine enthusiast gave it a. Uh, I'm going to say it's not. I'm going to say 83. Not good. 87. Holy shit. Griffin McElroy, 83 it's, points. It's one step above toilet wine. It is. 83, exactly. Oh, yeah. You got the exact right thing. So, you guessed it. So, where do you go wrong? Perfectly. What do you do bad to <laughs> well, make made this? a wine. Uh, it's tart and yeah. jammy with acidic, one dimensional flavors of pineapples, vanillas, and butterscotch. Now, I will say this. I don't think if you're fla- I don't want to call wine enthusiasts on their sh- bullshit. But you can't say it's got one-dimensional flavors of pineapples, vanilla, and butterscotch because it sounds like Dan has summed up at least three discrete flavors. Yeah, there. It, it, but, but, but they don't. They don't have distance, Justin. That's There's a, like two different pineapples. Like fuck you guys. With Seriously. A, with the 83 though, it sounds like my boy Dan took some pineapples and like vanilla pudding and butterscotch, blended it all up in a food processor, and then dumped that into some three buck chuck. 83, are you fucking kidding me? And 83 betwixt these lips? No way. No. No We way. have standards. Okay, uh, this, I want to do an easier one. Number 99 ice wine, Cabernet <laughs> Franc. Number 99 ice wine, you say. Number 99 ice wine, Cabernet Oh, this Franc. is uh, this is Mr. Jeffrey Gordon. I would also say Jeffrey Gordon. No, it's Wayne Gretzky. Oh. oh is that his number? Ice wine. Yeah. I, <laughs> oh. Yeah, didn't see that name on the list. Yeah, now name me the score that Wayne got from 99. his wine he did. <laughs> I would um, say 99. Oh, that's perfect. I'm actually going to say 89. Wayne got 92 points well, from wine enthusiasts. This enthusiast. is very good ice wine. Holy very, shit. Oh, Wayne, you shouldn't have. A medium cherry in color with notes of raspberry jam, wet stone. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> this tastes like a wet rock. I love it. 92 points. Hey, Wayne, <laughs> your wine tastes like r- wet rocks. And ba da ba ba ba, I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. Uh,. 2014 Casa du Metz. Oh. Thompson Grenache from Santa Barbara County. If it's Santa Barbara, I do think this one's Drew Barrymore. I think it's Drew Barrymore. It's Emilio Estevez's ah. Casa du Metz 2014 Thompson Grenache from Santa Barbara County. Wine enthusiast gives it a 94. Uh, 86. 92 points for Emilio. Yeah, pretty, the bottling shows yeah, you know very fun. Fresh cherry juice and dried roses, as well as inviting splashes of Dr. Pepper, cola nut, and uh, 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 <laughs> Hold on. Hi, I'm a professional wine critic, and this tastes like Dr. Pepper. Hold on. <laughs> Who the doctor is in this bottle? Uh, uh, let's do one more. Um, let's do the highest. No, I don't want to give that away. Uh, here's one. Chateau de Ting, 2014. One more? One more again? And what, what's the, what's the city of origin? I'm going to tell you, oh, it's, uh, Pinot Noir, Vin de France. Mm, French. Mm. Chateau de Ting, 2014. Uh, and the name of the person is actually in this wine, so I can't read the whole name of the wine, because that would be cheating. Okay, so, <laughs> one more time. Mike Ditka? The name of it? Chateau de Ting. It's Drew I'm, Drew Bledsoe's Chateau de Ting. I am going to say... Wait, can I change mine? Uh, I'm going to say Gerard Depardieu. I'm going to guess Boz Skag. It is Chateau de Ting 2014 Gerard Depardieu Pinot Noir. Yes! Vin de France. Wine enthusiast gives it A. 87. Uh, 82. 
Holy shit, Travis McElroy, 87 Damn. points with its Fuck. attractive red fruit flavors. This is a light perfumed wine. Mm-hmm. Travis just got the name of Gerard Depardieu's wine as well as the exact score. I don't know if we'll bring this back. What's Boz so, Skaggs' fucking wine called? I need to know. I, no, I need to know the band Trains wine. Boz Skaggs, Skaggs Vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a fucking like like a zone in a post apocalyptic game. Two thousand and eight montage uh, GSM, so it's a blend. Uh, I bet that means I don't actually know. Uh, Boz Skaggs leftovers. Valley. I didn't finish Give these me. bottles, so I put them all in one. You see a bottle on the shelf. It says Skaggs Vineyard. You open it up. And it's two thousand and eight. You open it up. You taste it. What kind of score are you going to give it? I know it's not on the scale, but 74. <laughs> Travis? 93. Well, boys, it is a 95, the highest rated <laughs> wine we have. The greatest celebrity wine is from Boz Skaggs. It's a, a ray for wine enthusiasts that's extraordinarily decadent. Montevere, Ganache, and Syrah blend. So it is a blend. Good for me. Currently among the best in California from Boz Skaggs. Wow. The best at wine, the best at playing Lido Shuffle. Boz Skaggs. Wow. Okay, give me the band Trains wine, Justin. Uh, I would, Travis, but I care about you too much to give you the band Trains wine because... Uh, it is. Let's see. Can I wait? Can Say, I guess? Can I guess? It's gonna be yeah. so much better. Is it drops of juniper? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's uh, it's save me San Francisco. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is the is the wine from the band Train? Uh, that of course is named after a song that they did, and it's actually a, an album. So they did the album and a song. And is it an eighty two, Justin? And I guess it's a wine as well. It's 86 points. The San Francisco-based Roots Rockers ugh, have a whole line of uh, wines based on their songs. There's also a Petite Syrah called Drops of Jupiter. Okay, nice. that's fine. Um, the I- wine is dry with a hint of oaky vanilla and buttered toast. Ooh. So that's the band Train's wine. It's very good. I don't think I'd ever want to drink wine and be like, mmm, toast. Mm. Yum, it's just like toast. Just the, I, Yeah. I don't want to drink wine that came out of the brain of train, the train brain. <laughs> Can I read this Yahoo? I know it's time for a question, but I the Yahoos are so good. Yeah, please. This one's sent in by Stephen Titus. It's Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. We'll call them Boz. Asks, <laughs> how do you describe taking out five blades out of your chest in a book? Like, one of my main characters in the book has got stabbed with five blades in his chest at the same time. How do mm-hmm. I describe in detail of him taking out of the five blades and what he feels as he takes them out? Help, please. Update. BTW, he's not human. May I, may I go? As if I'm reading... What, here's what I hear, Travis. I want to hear as if I'm reading the audiobook. As okay. if I'm listening to it on audible.com. Okay. Zebular turned to face his attackers. What, you think this can stop me? He said through his tentacled mouth. He began removing the blades. Shlorp came the first one. Shlorp came the second. Shlorp, that was the third one. Shlorp, that was the fourth. Shlorp, the fifth one came out. Clang, he threw them all on the ground. (laughs) Clang, clang, clang. Clang Clang went the second one. Clang went the third. Clang went the fourth. Schlorp went to fifth as he threw it into his attacker's chest, killing him instantly. Take that, attacker, said Zebular, or whatever his name was. Zebular, that was very good, Travis. Let me try. Okay. Zebular reached up and grabbed the knife handle of one of the five knives that was in him. (laughs) He pulled it out a little bit. Ah, fuck, he said. (laughs) He pulled it out another half inch. <laughs> Fuck me, seriously. He pulled it out another quarter inch. God damn it. Only three more inches to go, he thought to himself. And then he le- he blacked out from pain. <laughs> and then he woke back up. Okay, I've got to get back to war. <laughs> Chapter two. <laughs> he, yeah, another quarter inch came out of the knife. And he's like, "This is it's worse doing it slowly. God damn it. <laughs> and so he pulled it out another inch and a half. He thought to himself, fuck. Okay, well, only one more inch and a half to go. I uh, And then he puked. And 
<laughs> he's like, okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop kidding around. It's time to get serious. It's time to get real. And then he said this out loud. It's time to get real. It's time to get real. And then in an instant, he yanked it out. And then and then he finished. And then he did that with the other ones. <laughs> the end. Um, can I do it? Yeah, yeah, go, yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Hercules Jr. stood up from the ground and stopped being dead and smiled and smirked. Looks like you brought five knives to a god fight. He took the first blade by a handle and the second blade and did two at the same time as if to show off how power, how mighty he is. And then the third one came out pretty quick and the fourth one got a little rib. And so that one was tricky. And then he accidentally put the third one back in. <laughs> No, what a twist. Uh Uh-oh, he said, I'm just going to leave those there. It hurt a great deal, even for Hercules Jr., who can't be hurt. So it didn't (laughs) hurt it. I'm sorry, my backspace key fell off. And so whatever I write, it's got to stay in her. I mean, here. I couldn't even fix that. Anyway, then he he fell in love. The end. (laughs) Does uh does Yahoo the, the Yahoo community have any good ways of describing that? Um, I mean, Javik says there's a very good chance he wouldn't be feeling anything anymore, even if somehow someone survived five stab wounds to the chest. I don't think they're gonna last long if they yank the blades out and let themselves bleed. They're to death. not human. So that's why he's so he saw that and he was like, "All right, I gotta edit this question." No, it's an edit, Travis. He saw the first response, like, mm. "Ah, fuck, I should have clarified." Uh, oh, Gret- okay. Gretchen Wiener says, "Ouch." For normal people, they would have died. So the person writing this book is like, ah, fuck, maybe it shouldn't be five blades stabbed. Maybe Shoot. just four? Maybe four? I think I could do four. It depends uh, on where. That's the, Okay, listen, question writer. Is this like four stab wounds to the chest, or is like one okay, of them stab okay. my toe? And here's what it is. Update, Gretchen Wiener says, okay, then I got a great idea. How about, no, you don't. How, what about a lot of blood pouring out, but the blood that poured out went back in, and then his wound recovered? So here's what it would be. Hercules Jr. smirked and pulled all the five blades out with his five mighty arms <laughs> and threw them down to the ground. But it, evil Hercules knew the job was done. Look at all your blood, he says. It's on the ground where the dirt lives. Hercules Jr. smiles. Uh, we'll see about that. All five of his wounds open back up real wide and start making a sucking noise. And the blood... Slorp? Slorp. And the blood lifts up off the ground. And the five mouths on his body drinks it up. And all the blood goes back in him. Now I'm ready to fight again. I, l- I hate you, evil Hercules. Glad I got all my blood back. Now I'm strong for fighting. Look at how high I can jump. The end. The end. <laughs> You got to know when to in your book. Yep. And on a high note, that's what I always say. Thank you. Yes. Start. I say you got to start in the middle of the action and you got to end in the middle of the action. Evil Hercules sighed. Well, I'm out of knives. <laughs> Those are all my knives. I thought I would only need one, but I brought five. That was the set I got at Ikea and it only came with the five, five knives. Uh, how about another question? Yeah, we've only done one. Yeah, that seems like not enough. We should probably do more of those. My wife and I recently moved into our first house. We keep to ourselves, but try to be friendly with the neighbors. Yesterday, one of our neighbor's kids came to our door and asked if he could vacuum our home. A bit confused, but trying to be a good neighbor, we said he could vacuum downstairs. (laughs) Like a good neighbor, (laughs) vacuum my house. It took about 10 minutes, and we gave him $5. What? As he left, he gave us a handmade business card that said... (laughs) <laughs> it said i will vacuum your house for twenty dollars <laughs> now we're living with the shame of underpaying a 12 year old for a service we didn't want or ask for do we owe this kid 15 dollars if so how do we give him the money help spotless in seattle this kid i will vacuum your house for twenty dollars <laughs> <laughs> this kid had Let's just let's just confront this. A pocket full of business cards that said, I will vacuum our house for, and then 15 more dollars for however much money you gave him. If you gave him $50, right. he would say, for $65, I will vacuum your whole house. And it's a good racket. It's a good racket yeah. to get into. Good scam. Because that's the thing. It has to be like an artful dodger 
like kind of, uh, you know, the young gang of vacuuming scam artists. Because what kid just like rolls? It's one thing for like, I'll, va- I'll mow your lawn or whatever, but like, I'll vacuum your house. That kid probably also stole some of your jewelry. Put the vacuum into the jewelry box, sucked all the treasures up. I've never thought about this before, but if you let your like a kid like mow your lawn and vacuum your house, when does this start to like broach into like child labor issues? Immediately, instantly, already. Yeah, the has. moment you pay them a service for hard hard work. So you think this is work. a sting? Like this kid, if you have him back, he's definitely wearing a wire. So. I appreciate the uh, the entrepreneurial ship of of this child, right? Because I used to mow um, Tommy Red's dad's lawn for money that I could spend on hero clicks. But I used a manual yes. push mower that didn't accomplish anything. It just kind of um, just kind of uh, mushed, it, just it, mushed the grass down. It mushed the grass down, and so. One time I went to do it, and he said, last time, did you actually do it? And I said, yeah, I just used a push mower, and so it didn't work very well. And he said, <laughs> I'm not going to employ you anymore. And I said, totally got it. $20, please. <laughs> I'll vacuum your house for $20. I will vacuum your house with, for $20. With this push mower? I would sell, a, I'll, I will vacuum your house for $20 uh, t-shirt at our merch store. I'm par- fairly sure you could not walk half a block wearing that shirt. You would just instantly like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, yeah, yeah, come, come with on me. In. Come on in, please. Uh, this isn't your house, and we're not anywhere near your house. I know, but I really need this service. This is a great service. I, I think you might be in the clear because the terms were not agreed upon before, right? This is not how business cards work. It's not no, a business, it's not, it's a business card, not an invoice. You need to be ready for the fact that this kid is going to come back, yeah. and he's going to offer you the service again. And you are going to need to think of a reason why you said yes the first time, but now it's a no from now on. We found I'm another much cleaner we, than I used to be. We found another child who does it for fifteen. So sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> you got undercut, Jeremy. Hit the bricks. This is business. Mark Cuban came by with his fifteen dollar house vacuuming service. <laughs> it's a robot, you see. So it's, I'm sorry to say that automation is taking your job, Jeremy. I love twenty dollars. Don't get me wrong. It's a good number. It's a good number, and if you're a kid, it's basically $100. That basically is the thing. $100. A $20 bill when you're a kid is like a is like blank check. $20? Oh, my $20? gosh. Well, with inflation, they'd still be jazzed about $20. They'd still be psyched out of their fucking minds. Yeah. Probably not a good vacuuming job, huh? Why didn't you ask how much it costs? Why did you understand. let this kid in your house with no terms discussed? That you, if you don't ask the kid how much it costs up front, you are opening yourself up to a reality in which you're like, well, what do I owe you? And the kid's like, oh, nothing. I just wanted to look at all your things and touch them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm dirty and I'm nasty. Or so you're anyway, like, what do I owe you? And the kid's like $150. Yeah, that's all bad. Like, there's no good outcome here. Or the kid comes in to vacuum your house and he's still vacuuming your house like three hours later. And you're like, also- okay, go. Go. That's also, ten ten minutes. I'm not sure he was doing a very good job. That's I think he we can all agree on that. Stuff. It's not a good vacuum job this child did. So it's, it may have been a five dollar vacuum job. If you want your house vacuumed, call me. I'll I, do it for it's nineteen tw- tw- twenty five dollars. But it'll be cleaned by a man, <laughs> and I will show you how a man <laughs> cleans a house. <laughs> yeah, a child's not going to do it. I'll show you how a man. Vacuums. Whoa, Justin, that vacuum cleaner's pretty big. Are you sure you can? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, it's no problem. I'll throw it on my back like a Ghostbuster. And you can get, like, business cards that says, like, I'll suck this shit out of your house carpet. <laughs> <laughs> our mom used to put, to other people do this, our mom used to put this weird, smelly dust. Carpet, carpet fresh. fresh? Carpet fresh. Do people still do carpet fresh? Because I feel like I've never seen anybody else do it. I know it used to be a thing where it's like, I'm about to vacuum anyway. Let me throw a bunch of dust on the no, ground. I guarantee Carpet Fresh is now like asbestos and lead paint. Where it's oh, like, for sure. Like what? nobody uses. No, are you kidding me? You use Carpet Fresh? Oh, your feet are going to melt off by the time you're 40. That is going to do it for us for this week, folks. Folks, thank you so much for in. Uh, in I was going to say enjoying, but that seems indulging. Indulging yourself in this pot, indulging oh, us. Yeah, that's like, what I was going to say. Yeah. Thank you for indulging us for this hour. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed yourself. 
Uh, we are okay. So we have a few things to talk about. We're going to try to blow through them as quick as possible. St. Louis and Detroit, Columbus. We're also coming to you in May, but you you have come out in a big way and you bought all you bought up all the ding dang tickets. If you're in St. Louis or Detroit, though, and you have some free time on Thursday, May third, or Friday, Mark May fourth. Uh, we're going to be at the Peabody Opera House in St. Louis and the Masonic Temple Theater in Detroit uh, doing our podcast, My Brother, My Brother, Me, live on stage. And it's going to be very fun, and we would love it if you would come out and see us. Those shows are very, those shows are very close, and uh, there's lots of good seats available, so please come buy them. Um, there's not, like, uh, infinity tickets. There's, like, a fixed amount in the world. It will it might sell out before the the time we do the show. So hop on it right now. Don't wait. Go get great tickets cuz you deserve it. And if you go to macroshows.com/tours, you can get those right now. So please come see us again May 3rd, May 4th, St. Louis, Detroit. Let's do it. And send in your questions and make sure to put in the subject line like Detroit mm-hmm. show or Columbus show or St. Yeah. Louis show or whatever. Um, yeah. also want to say just announced we are going to be on this year's Joko Cruise, Joko Cruise 2019. Uh, we are super excited about it, and we hope you are super well, excited about it your, too. Speak for yourself. I can't. St- I can't stop thinking about the Kraken. You're worried about the Kraken? The Kraken, Leviathan, Poseidon. Yeah, uh, I understand. Uh, Big Mark. Well, don't worry. Right. We start every. They start every Joker cruise with a sacrifice to the sea. Okay. So that we don't have to worry about it. Um, Listen, there's not many cabins available, but we're going to be on there with They Might Be Giants and our whole family. So, like, come on this fucking cruise already. What are you talking about? JokoCruise.com. It's one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life going in last year. So I'm super looking forward to this one. J-O-C-O Cruise.com. Also want to say, uh, I started a secret society here in Cincinnati called the Cincinnati Underground Society. And we are doing a monthly show called the Cincinnati Underground Society Show, or CUS. And nice. uh, uh, tickets for our April show are on sale now. Uh, they are very close to selling out. Uh, we're at about 75% sold at this point. Uh, the show comes up Saturday, April 28th. I've got uh, five out-of-town guests coming in and one local, and they're pretty great. It's going to be a really great show. We had a lot of fun doing the March show. I'm not going to tell you who the guests are, but trust me, it's, it's a really good lineup. Um, so if you want to come out to that, come to uh, go to bit.ly slash C-U-S-S-K-E-Y 2018. Cuss Key Two zero one eight. Come to Travis's show and also buy my book. Justin and Sydney are doing a book, and that's so exciting. They just announced it. They've been working really hard on it. Yep. Uh, Sydney's sister, my sister-in-law Taylor, who's extremely talented, is doing illustrations, and it is a book based on our podcast Sawbones. Uh, and you can get it at bit.ly forward slash Sawbones book. And it's a pre-order. It's not coming out till October, but like, please pre-order, pre-order this book. I worked so hard on it. It's so hard to write a book. Bit.ly forward slash Sawbones book. Please buy a bunch of copies of it. Thank you. Also, much. we got a merch store with some cool new stuff on it, and you can find it all. A new Munch Squad pin. Yeah, it's really cool at McElroyMerch.com. All right. That's actually only that's only for April. So if you want a Munch Squad pin, go get it Act right fast. now. Or, so you won't get it. Uh, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network, and thank you to everybody who supported us in the Max Fun Drive. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there. If you want to see more stuff we do, go to McElroyShows.com. And thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song into departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. Dude, you want that final Yahoo? Yes. Yep. It's from Yahoo. Uh, it's sent in by Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. It's Yahoo Answers user Spandy? Question mark? Who asks... <laughs> now back to sandals and non-white socks who thought that up <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy I'm Travis McElroy I'm Griffin McElroy this has been my brother my brother and me kiss your dad square on the lips MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.
Do you love books? Want to get more out of all that reading you do? I'm Bria Grant. And I'm Mallory O'Mara. Join us every Thursday on Reading Glasses, where we help you read better. Reading Glasses is a show about book culture, teaching you how to enhance your literary life and solve your bookish problems, like how do you get out of a reading slump? What's the best book light to use in bed while your partner is trying to sleep? Where do you hide the bodies of the people who talk while you're trying to read? In the basement of my apartment building. Ooh, that's a good place. Let Bria and I improve your reading life every Thursday on Reading Glasses, Maximum Fun's new culture podcast. Learn Learn how how to read read better. better.